So what good is a finished product without packaging? In this video we use thermoforming to create a product packaging for my Arcator 3 handheld. Stay tuned. It's been a while since finishing the most recent iteration of the Arcator 3 handheld, and because of the amount of work I put into each one of these devices, I wanted to do something special with packaging to keep them safe and clean, but not be over the top. This is the perfect application for thermoforming. In this video, we're going to walk through the creation and technique to do just that. Create a 3D printed, thermoformed Arcator 3 case, lined with felt and neoprene for a clean and safe solution. For this project, I wanted to use thermoforming as a basis for its perfect fit and low cost. In this process, the steps will include creating a vacuum formed part to hold the Arcator 3 and charging cord, then coating that part with a layer of felt, next creating a top and bottom lid to support and case the felt holder, and lining them with neoprene and some graphics on the outside. But all of this starts with design in Fusion 360, so let's get started. In Fusion 360, I started by designing a forming buck. A forming buck is the model that will be used to vacuum form the heated plastic over to create the part. Using the Arcator body model, I inflate it by 2 millimeters to allow space for the felt to be applied. In addition to a place for the Arcator to sit, I added a small area to place a charging cable. I extrude these at a small angle to allow it for easier release from the mold. I then added vent holes to the model, allowing the vacuum to purge air while pulling the material down into the corner. These molds don't have a lot of detail in the cavity, so only a few holes were needed. With the buck created, I then modeled a tool to help with forming the felt into the plastic holder. To do this, I used a model of the buck to create a model negative. I then duplicated it and using a one millimeter outside shell operation to create a tool that I'll use to shave one millimeter off of that negative. This leaves some room for the felt so that it's not a super tight fit when I'm pressing it into the mold. I 3D printed the forming buck and felt applicator tool on the Lulzbot TAS. For these parts, surface quality doesn't really matter as the thermoform object will be covered in felt, so imperfections won't be visible. They were printed with ABS at 0.3 millimeter layer height and 15% infill density. The parts were used directly from the printer with no post finishing required. For the thermoforming, I used the Vacuform thermoforming machine. You may have seen this one in some of my other videos. I always enjoy using this thing. It produces great results. It's fast and fun to use. Using the machine is straightforward. It has several predefined or custom recipes which makes it particularly easy. You select the material, the temperature, the material thickness, and it's good to go. The sheet carrier has a two-part frame, and it's adjustable for different thicknesses of plastic. You basically insert your material, clamp the frame together, then raise the material up to the heating element where it's magnetically held in place. While it's heating, I spray some food grade silicone on my forming buck and place it in the vacuum area. The vacuum area is 9 by 12 inches, which is pretty good in size to work with. The machine then monitors the material temperature, and when it's just right for the type of material you're using, the internal vacuum turns on to let you know it's showtime. To form the part, you just pull the drawbar down to seal the frame against the vacuum panel. The vacuum will draw out as much as it can initially, and then a second stage pump will kick in, and you'll see the form really draw the material down into the details of your buck. Once formed, the machine will continue to draw air while the plastic cools, ensuring that the part's held in shape on the form. Once it stops, it's time to remove the part. You remove the top frame, release the suction, and the part comes out easily. Next, depending on how much draft you added to your model and or any undercuts you may have, will determine how easy your parts release from the forming buck. My model could use more draft on the vertical edges of the design, sort of like a popsicle mold, just to allow the part to release a little easier. It's important to keep in mind if you're making finished or clear parts that you're sure to finish your forming buck surface as any and all imperfections will show up in the part. If you look at the part closely, you can see the layer lines from the 3D printed mold that I used. Not to worry though, for this part we'll be wrapping it in felt. To do that, I'll first coat the back of the felt with a Loctite contact cement, then lay the felt on the part. Using the felt applicator tool, I depress the felt into the dual cavities of the part. I stretch the material to relax it to the fit and shape while continuing to apply driving pressure into the part. When fully seated, I apply constant pressure to let the glue set up. Next, I work the edges down the sides of the part, smoothing out the felt to avoid any folds. When finished, I remove the applicator tool and cut the part from the sheet. With that, the holder insert is complete. To keep with the simple style, in Fusion 360 I designed a top and bottom case shell. These were also printed out on the Lulzbot TAS and didn't require any finishing. With all of the parts in hand, it's time for fit and finish. 
First, the arcader holder gets hot melt glued into the bottom shell. Next, to finish off the top shell, I laser cut neoprene for the inside and black vinyl for the outside. Those are then applied to the top case. Finally, I add a matte black channel logo to the top of the case and then slide it on for a smooth fit and finish. And now, for some glamour shots of the finished product. So what do you think? I think this came out quite well. Alternatively, custom boxes could be used for a more commercial finish if that's what you're going for. For my purposes, this is exactly what I was going for, and I'm pretty sure my customers will appreciate the extra work to protect their investment. I think that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you found something interesting in this quick thermoforming project. If you're interested in learning more about thermoforming and or the Vacuform machine, I'll put a link in the description to check out their product in more detail. I think it's a great tool and it's fun to use. Coming up, I'll be showing how thermoforming can be used in mechanical assemblies, so be sure to ring that notification bell to be updated on future projects. Also, if you enjoyed this particular video, give it a thumbs up, it lets me know you like it. And if you didn't, well, leave a comment and tell me what you'd like to see. That's kind of how this platform works. I almost forgot, congratulations to Ryan Carey who won the Arduino Super Uno kit. Hope you have lots of fun with the kit, and I can't wait to see how your project turns out. Also, I want to give a special thanks to my channel backers. This content's easier with your support. There are lots of ways to support the channel. Uh, to learn more, head over to the DIY.engineering website. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.